everyone, I'm Sam and welcome to The Sugarly Stitch, my channel where I talk all things knitting, spinning, and fiber craft related. Hey everyone, I'm Sam and I am based in the central belt of Scotland where I live with my partner and our dachshund Poppy. Today I'm going to do a bit of project planning with you. So I have had a lot of my stash out lately and I've just been trying to look through and see what I have, um, how I can best use it, and just generally um, kind of make better use of what I already have rather than buy lots of new things. And what I have found is that I don't have tons of sweater quantities or really enough colors, enough of one color for lots of big projects, but I have plenty of um, different yarns that I can use for lots of different types of accessories. So whether that's sock yarn, um, different amounts of DK weight, sport weight, etc. Um, it all amounts to having yarn for lots of smaller projects. So what I thought I would do is um, some project planning and a kind of a pattern roundup and plan out um, 10 accessories that I want to make. Um, so most of these patterns are um, projects that I definitely do want to make at some point. A good portion of them I already have the yarn for or half the yarn for. So I'm just going to go through these 10 projects and explain a little bit about what draws me to them, what yarn I'm going to use, um, and yeah, tell you some of the details. These, I don't have a particular deadline for any of these items. Um, I'll just kind of make them as and when I have time and hopefully uh, work through a little bit of my stash at the same time. Uh, I always love to read your comments, so if you have um, if you want to let me know maybe what you're working on or if there's anything that you particularly like out of the patterns that I'm going to show you, I'm always happy to hear about those. So yeah, please go ahead and pop a comment down below and maybe let me know what you're working on or where you're coming from. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first project is the Cinnabar Shawl, which is um, a pattern by Andrea Mowry. And this is um, driven by the yarn. So this yarn is um, some of my hand spun and I used it for the contrast color in my metamorphic sweater, which I recently finished. Um, it originally came from a bat by Celie McWheelie, who is a local um, Scotland based um, dyer and um, fiber maker. <laughs> she makes these really cool like art bats. And so I picked the art bat up um, just purely driven by the bat and not with any major plans of what to do with the finished yarn or like how I was going to spin it. Um, it was, I had never worked with an art bat before. And so um, I spun it up, obviously used it for the contrast color in my metamorphic sweater. And then I have this quantity of yarn left, which as you can see is quite a bit of yarn left. Um, so I was trying to figure out how to best use it. And I landed on the Cinnabar shawl which is, as I say, a pattern by Andrea Mowry, um, and it is part brioche and part garter stitch. So I don't currently have an accent color for this. Um, I'm thinking maybe a pale gray would show it off really nicely. Um, I don't think I want another color particularly because there's so much color in this yarn as it is, but yeah. So I don't have the yarn for that one, the 100% of the yarn for that one, um, so that'll be kind of something I keep an eye out for maybe as I go to different um, yarn festivals or different events. Um, I may end up choosing to spin something for it, which would be kind of nice, um, but we'll just see. So that is like in the someday pile, um, definitely something I will definitely, like I will definitely do that project, but I just need to kind of keep an eye out for the appropriate contrast yarn. So that is project number one, uh, the Cinnabar Shawl. Project number two is something that I don't actually have a pad, um, a yarn for yet, and it is the Coral Reef Wrap. So this is a pattern by Lisa Hands. Um, it's this kind of ribbed, cabled pattern. It's a little bit hard to describe, but I'll pop a picture in. It, um, it looks, well, it looks like there's cables, but there's not actually cables. Um, and it's kind of an elongated ellipsis. So my reasoning for wanting to make one of these, and while I don't have the yarn yet, I will obviously get some at some point, um, is that what I think I'm, one of the things I'm missing in my knitted wardrobe is just a really 
simple scarf in a fairly neutral color or oversized scarf really is what I'm looking for that I can throw on with anything. Um, that'll be nice and cozy, isn't too overpowering as far as the size. Um, yeah, and can like effectively just be wrapped around like a big scarf. So I have some smaller cowls that I wear quite up close to my neck. Um, and I have some bigger um, kind of Stephen West style shawls, but those are much more statement pieces. And so I'm really looking for something that is uh, much more of a neutral and can, like, like I say, just be worn with anything. And so I think this pattern is fits that really nicely, but it's also interesting enough that I won't be bored. Like I don't just want a big sea of garter stitch or just like plain ribbing all the way. Um, so this is a lot of ribbing, but also some nice twisted um, shapes in there. So I think it fits the, fits the brief nicely. Um, again, this might be something that I spin for just because I like to spin and so why not have a project in mind for it. Um, it's designed for a fingering weight yarn plus a Surrey lace weight yarn. I probably wouldn't do that. I There's only specific projects that I really want to use two strands on. I'm not the type of person to use um, two strands of yarn on like every single project just because it's the done thing to um, like just because that's what tons of de designers call for. So I would probably just use one, um, strand and use, so since it's fingering and surrey, maybe a DK weight, um, yarn instead, which would be pretty straightforward to spin for as well. So that is my project number two. Again, no immediate plans to start on that one because I obviously don't have the yarn, but it is definitely something that I want to do at some point. Um, because I think the finished product will be such um, such a, like a nice thing, a nice basic to have in my wardrobe. Okay, so number three is a bit of a different pattern um, or a different kind of project for me. Um, it is the Funfetti shawl and this is by Max Knitter or Maxim Sear. Um, I think he brought it out, yeah, just earlier this year. Um, and maybe this isn't as quite as wearable of a pattern um, with the bright colors, but I think this would just be so fun to make. Like I just, um, something about the pattern drew me to it as soon as I saw it. Um, and yeah, I just think it looks so fun. Um, so it's one of those definitely um, like a heart overhead kind of projects because uh, I'm not sure it's like the most easy thing to wear for me, like in, in what I tend to wear but I do just love it, so I'm probably gonna make it. The other thing about this project is that I actually, for all the knitting I've done, I've not knit in Tarja. And this is a very straightforward garter stitch, um, kind of small shawl, large scarf. And so I think it's a good way to get my feet wet within Tarja, um, but not go too far. I mean, I'm pretty sure I couldn't do it, but you know, a good starter project. Um, and I also think I have the perfect yarn for it. So this is some yarn that I picked up at the Glasgow School of Yarn Festival in, I believe it was 2021. Yeah, I didn't go last year, so 2021. And this is from Eilair Yarn. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but Eilair Yarn. Um, and that it, this is hand dyed in East Lothian, so that's not overly far from me. Um, and it is called Easdale. It's 70% baby alpaca, 20% silk, and 10% cashmere. And I bought this because it is the most soft, beautiful thing that I've ever felt and I couldn't resist. But I didn't want to buy too much because as you can tell by that fiber content, um, it's not inexpensive. Um, so I bought two skeins of this. So I have about uh, 500 meters, 200 grams. Now the pattern calls for... Um, holding two strands of La Bien Aimee um, helix together um, and then using the merino boucle for the little patches of color. Um, I am not going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to use obviously this one DK weight uh, yarn instead. Now it does call for sport but this isn't a hugely thick DK so I think it can probably get away with it. Also I've been struggling to find something to use to find the right pattern to use um, this yarn in because it's so drapey like you can see if I hold the end of the skein it just completely flops over um, because obviously my, <laughs> the alpaca silk and cashmere um, not so not 
fibers that have tons of structure. So I had originally thought about doing a cowl, but I like my cowls to stand up a little bit more. And this yarn is just not the right yarn for that. Um, so I think this is this kind of scarf shawl thing is a really nice option to use this yarn for. And I think it'll show it off fairly nicely. So what I'm going to use for the contrast color is this rainbow of um, Yak uh, Superwash Merino. So it's Yak Sock, 75%, a 70% Superwash Merino, 20% Yak, and 10% Nylon. And this is from The Little Grey Girl. And this is also um, a set that I picked up at that same festival. Now, I also got a self-striping rainbow um, sock yarn from the same dyer, and this is also a yak sock, um, which I've clearly already knit up and been wearing. And so I think, I'm not really sure why I thought it would be a good plan to get this, and also, like, granted it's got a few more colors, but it's very similar, so I don't, I don't need two pairs of stripy socks. So I've also been thinking about, like, what, what am I going to do with all of these sock yarns? Um, so I think together these will be really nice not they're not really in rainbow order but you kind of you get the you get the vision um i think together these will be really nice and these will be my pops of color and then my nice gray background so i'm actually really excited about this and i can start this whenever i've obviously got all the yarn for it um i will hold the fingering um double so i think i'll actually probably get through a good chunk of this yarn um just based on what the pattern uh, requirements say. So I think that's quite quite an exciting one. Okay, so that is all of the wraps or neckwear that I'm going to do. So that is three of three of that kind of <laughs> genre of project. Um, my next project is kind of a one-off and it is a pair of fingerless gloves. So I don't tend to work tons and tons from books just because I kind of forget that I have them on my shelf. Um, but my boyfriend has been asking for a pair of fingerless gloves um, because they're a really practical project. Um, we obviously have to walk our dog every day. So um, the fingerless gloves are really good for um, walking your dog in the cold, um, but also having your fingers available, like if you need to get your phone out or like get treats out, it's quite hard to do that while you're wearing gloves. Um, so it's very much a practical project. And honestly, I'm thinking of doing it for myself as well. Um, and so I was kind of trying to look through and find a good pattern. And he specified that he didn't want the fingerless mitts that just have like ribbing up to here. And it's just like one big, like a mitten without the top. He wanted the ones that have individual finger holes. <laughs> um, so that's the kind of pattern I was looking for. And then I was randomly looking through um, uh, some of my few knitting books that I actually do have in my magazines. And I came across a pattern in, so this is the Knitting Season book by Kate Davies. And I came across this pattern called the Dathan Gloves. Um, now, obviously this is written to be super stripy, but the actual basic pattern is just for these ribbed fingerless gloves. Um, I think that's probably the best picture. I'll try and put another picture up as well. Um, but they're pretty straightforward. Like um, you can see kind of, uh, they've got really long cuffs. You start out with the two by two ribbing and then it goes into three by one ribbing and then they've got holes for the fingers like it fits the brief I probably won't make them as long I don't think they need to go like all the way up his arm so I'll make that ribbing a little bit shorter and I'm not going to do the stripes um but yeah the basic pattern suits uh suits the brief and the yarn I'm going to use is this which is a Lammermuir wool hillfoots blend which is a four ply well we'll call it a four ply I think it's actually only two plies to be perfectly honest um, but this is another, um, this is a yarn from, that I got when I was at the Scottish, Scottish Wool Producers Showcase last year. Um, so it's made from Shetland fleece, um, blended with a uh, locally sourced Gotland worsted spun. And they are based again in, um, near Edinburgh. So, uh, again, a very local yarn. Um, it's a nice kind of rustic -y, um gray 
very good neutral. There's not tons to say about it. Um, it'll be great for gloves. Now, the only other thing is that um, Cameron had mentioned the idea of having convertible gloves, um, which I had kind of forgot when I originally found this pattern. But I was looking through a different pattern book that I had checked out from our public library, which I had forgotten that you could get knitting books from the public library. What a revelation. So I grabbed um, definitely a good few of them, uh, a few of the ones that I found in their online catalog. So I highly recommend checking out your local library if you are looking for some different um, knitting books and you don't want to buy them. But um, so this uh, is one that our library had. It's called Knitting from the North. Um, and it's by Hilary Grant and it is, um, so she lives in Orkney and takes inspiration from kind of that area of Scotland. But what is great is that this book coincidentally has a pattern for fingerless gloves with, um, the convertible, um, the convertible like mitten top situation. Um, so I think I'm probably going to do a mashup of the two patterns because I don't, these gloves are knit flat and then sewn up because of the color work um, and how the color work is uh, distributed across the hand. So I don't particularly want to do that. And I think the ribbed gloves will fit, like fit the hand nicely and kind of squeeze it, not squeeze it, but you know, have a bit of memory and um, negative ease. Um, but I think I'm going to take the uh, method for creating this mitten top and add it on to the Daffin glove pattern. So it's a bit of a mashup making up my own pattern, but um, honestly, it's pretty straightforward. I've already had a read through of how you um, add that um, convertible mitten top and it, it, it makes a lot of sense. It's basically you knit, you knit your gloves all the way up, you finish the fingers and whatnot, and then you pick up stitches across the back of the hand. And then you, um, that's how, that's how that is attached. Um, and then I think you, um, like knit those and you'll need to cast on for the other side of the mitten top. And then you just knit like the top of a mitten <laughs> once you have your base, um, stitches. So I think it'll be pretty straightforward. Um, so yeah, that's the next project that I want to make. And I have, to be honest, I've actually already started, um, the cuffs. For those they look quite small but obviously ribbing is stretchy um so yeah i don't know that it'll use i'm pretty sure it won't use actually this whole um skein of yarn so i might actually squeeze out a pair for myself as well um and if i don't if i don't have quite enough i've got plenty of contrast colors that would go nicely um so i think that probably two pairs of those are in my future and again that's just a very practical project it's it's gonna fill a need that i have in my and cameron's wardrobe so that was my one and only pair of uh fingerless gloves now let me move on to hats so the first hat that i am planning to make is cairngorm by isolde teague um, I really love pretty much, well, not all of Isolde's patterns, but like a lot of them are nice. And Karen Gorm is one that I've had in, um, in my queue for quite a while. It's kind of Fair Isle-ish, but not as, um, maybe not as complex as some Fair Isle patterns look. I don't know. There's something about it that I just really like. Um, it's got stripes of small color work motifs. Um, so it's a good kind of beginner color work project. It calls for sport weight yarn. I don't have tons of sport weight yarn, but sport weight is really kind of like heavy fingering-ish. Um, and I think the pattern could be pretty easily converted to a fingering weight yarn if it needs to be. Um, I can just um, like add another couple repeats of the, of the color work pattern. Like it's not that hard. I just need to do a little bit of math depending. So, I am planning to use this um, Jameson, Jameson and Smith Heritage. Um, this is probably a light fingering weight to be perfectly honest. So we're probably a little ways away from sport there. So I think I definitely will need to do some math, um, but that's all right. It'll use up um, a bit more of this yarn. This is a cone left over um, from a sweater that I've been making Cameron. I'm pretty much done with that sweater. I know I don't need this. So I've got plenty of yarn to use for the hat. And it's a nice kind of neutral gray base color. Um, the other two contrast colors that I have are these. So it's um, kind of a heathery burgundy and a, again, kind of a heathered blue. Now these are both reclaimed from jumpers that I got at thrift stores. 
Um, I haven't done this in a while, but when I was a student and looking for bargains on yarn, I would go see what kind of um, jumpers were in the thrift stores and the charity shops, etc. And um, if they were 100% wool and constructed in a way that you could unravel them, um, I would buy them and do, do just that. The caveat with that is it means that like often the yarn used is quite thin, like lace weight. So you can see there. Um, but I just tend to use it two strands held together. That's approximately a fingering. So it'll be fine. I use this as a contrast color in um, a different color work sweater that I made, the Merit um, cardigan. And this is one of the contrast colors that I used. And so this is all that I have left. I'm not going to be able to get more, obviously, because it's reclaimed from a sweater. So um, yeah, I think this is a good way to use up a little bit more of that yarn. Um, and then this is, again, um, reclaimed from a jumper that I got from a store, a charity shop. I think it's a little bit thicker than the blue. It's actually maybe similar to the thickness of the uh, gray. So this one maybe won't need to be doubled up. But again, it is a quite a, it is a fairly light yarn. I think it is actually a two ply. Um, and this is 100% wool. I think they were both high proportion of wool, if not 100% wool. And so I think these three colors together are just really nice. Like it's kind of a not in your face color work but they've definitely got enough contrast to each other and to the background color that it'll work together nicely and you never you only use one yarn um at a time they're not like they're always playing against the background color so they don't need to contrast to each other too much just enough to be able to see in the hat so that is the plan for these um yeah, I can cast that on pretty much any time. I don't have any specific plans to, but it's kind of there waiting for me when I when I get to that project. Okay, so the next pattern is the Grow Hat. And this is another pattern that I don't actually have the yarn for, but I saw the pattern be released and I just really like it. Um, I think this would also be a nice one to spin yarn for. I, um, I don't have necessarily anything in my stash. I don't have a huge fiber stash. Um, that would be great for this, but um, I'm definitely going to keep an eye out again. So this calls for um, one skein of DK weight, so 230 meters um, or 100 grams. Um, pretty straightforward. It's got this lovely kind of like leaf motif. Um, I just think it's nice. I don't know how else to describe it. It's a, it's a little bit of interest in it, but it's not a full-on cabled hat. Um, I think it would probably work best in a very natural shade as shown in the pattern photo. Um, so yeah, I'm probably just going to keep an eye out and see see what pops up, or if I end up getting some fleece to work from, um, I might use that as well. But yeah, this is just, I think this is a really good pattern as well for anyone who's interested in um, maybe trying out charts, reading charts for the first time, um, or a bit of a textured um, pattern but doesn't want to go full on with cables yet. I think it's a pretty good starter pattern for that kind of situation. <clears throat> so yeah, the grow hat, um, this is one that I'll do at some point. The next pattern is the muscle bra hat. And I probably don't need to tell you about the muscle bra hat, but I will. It's another Isolde Teague pattern. And this is a version that I just completed in a um, really nice hand dyed um, kind of gray. <laughs> um, this is by Old Maiden Ant and it's a uh, single ply superwash merino. Um, and I did, I made this because I wanted just a nice neutral hat that was going to keep me warm that didn't have anything that was going to make me itchy. So this is the muscle bra. Um, yeah, there's not tons and tons to say about this one. It's a basic hat, um, keeps me cozy. It's basically four layers at the, at the brim. Um, because, um, if you haven't seen the muscle bra, how it's constructed, it is just a big long tube inside itself. So you start at one end and increase and then knit straight for ages and then decrease. Um, I made this, um, as I say, out of a fingering weight yarn and I think I had used size um, US2 needles. So it's a fairly not overly dense fabric. It's not as dense as socks, for example, which would be a bit excessive, but it's just nice. doesn't let any wind through um, and a really practical, but um, yet still kind of stylish, um, nice basic. So that, I want to make another one of these in, because it is such a nice basic pattern, but what I'm going to make it out of is this 
um, amazingly bright uh, seismic yarn dye works, um, seismic yarn dye works that I picked up when we were in San Francisco last year. So I got this from Firebird Yarns and seismic yarn is a local dyer. They're based out of Daly City, San Francisco, California. Um, and this is their seismic butter sock base, which is 85% um, superwash merino and 15% nylon. I, this is kind of one of those purchases that was, I really love this color. It's like one of those ones that you just love the color, can't, um, can't not get it. <laughs> um, and I was really originally just going to make socks with it because um, who doesn't love a pair of friendlessly bright socks? I mean, probably plenty of people don't, but I do. <laughs> if I get really bright sock, uh, really bright yarn, I'm most often going to use it for socks. However, the reason I'm thinking to make a hat out of this is again for the dog walking situation. So I think it'd be fun to have uh, like a neon hat for walking the dog in the kind of dusky um, dark weather. And I'm not exactly trying to make a fashion statement when I'm out walking. So I just think this is fun. Um, and the one skein is enough for this hat. I did use a little bit more than one skein on this, but I can definitely get away with just using the one, especially if I weigh my yarn beforehand and then um, uh, and make sure I know how much I use for the increases and then leave enough to uh, that same amount to use for the decreases. So that is the plan for this one. And I may actually cast that one on soon because this is a really good project just to have on the needles when you want something to knit that um, is very, very mindless. So once you're past the increases, um, honestly, <laughs> it's a lot of knitting in their own stockinette. Like, it takes a while. Um, but it's just one of those projects that I didn't rush through, just left for when I wanted something that um, really didn't need any attention from me at all. Um, because I can knit stockinette in the round without looking. So um, even good for like movie theater type situation. Um, so that is the plan for this. I think it'll be really fun when it's done. <laughs> All right, so the last few things I have are all socks. And to be honest, I probably could have chosen um, 10 sock patterns to make and have an entire video be about socks, but I decided not to do that to you. Um, so let me know if you want to um, have an entire video about socks, because I could definitely do that. Um, but I have been fairly restrained and um, just chosen three and then a bonus one. So um, starting out with the eggs for Easter socks. So I have um, planned to make these socks. I haven't actually bought the book yet, but I will at some point. I definitely have the yarn for it. So this is a pattern by Stone Knits and the book is Charming Colorwork Socks, 25 Delightful Knitting Patterns for Colorful, Comfy Footwear. And I was actually able to flick through um, Venetia's book and take a look at all the patterns that are available. It's Venetia of the Woolly Worker. And coincidentally, she'd been talking about them um, on one of her recent videos and so had I think Penrose Knits and I think maybe because like Easter's coming up and whatnot it's a very on theme um, project but I saw them and I immediately thought of my mom <laughs> and that is because um, I grew up with chickens she still has chickens I think these are hilarious I mean there's like a little egg and yolk on the toe for goodness sake and then the little chicken color work around the cuff like I just love them um, and I do definitely have all the yarn for them. So the main colors you need are a bit of yellow, a bit of white and blue, and then a tiny bit of red for the accents. Um, I'm planning to use the West Yorkshire Spinners Signature 4-ply in Juniper. Um, I have the Cascade Heritage in just this kind of natural white. And then I think this is also Cascade Heritage Red and then a little bit of um, leftover yellow hand-dyed Queen of Pearls. Um, and I don't even think I'll probably use all of these, uh, all of any of these, to be honest. So I just think these are so cute. I'm not normally a huge fan of complex socks, but I'm trying to branch out a little bit and um, I couldn't resist this pattern. I think I might end up making them a little bit longer just because my preference for socks is in general a bit longer socks. Or if I'm not going to do longer socks, then I would do shorter than these. So it's kind of a weird in-between length, but that's the only modification I would make. Um, and again, I could pretty much cast these on anytime um, as soon as I get the book um, that the pattern is from. Um, so yeah, that's the plan for these. The next pattern that I want to do is um, the Thanksgiving socks. 
So because I have knit so many socks, <laughs> I have plenty of scraps. Um, and therefore, um, I can pretty much use any, I, I have a multitude of options for these socks. Um, so this is the Thanksgiving Socks by Summer Lee, which is a pattern that I've had for a little while, but I haven't actually knit up yet. And these are written uh, for a DK weight, or um, she, she writes it for two fingering yarns held together, and it creates this nice marlin effect. And it's actually um, a pattern for three different socks. So um, I think you get a, a decent kind of uh, bang for your buck, shall we say. Um, so there's a plain vanilla pattern, um, which is just a vanilla sock pattern written for DK weight. Um, yeah, pretty straightforward. The pattern I'm looking to do is the ribbed version, and they kind of remind me of um, Andrea Mowry's uh, Everyday Sock, I think it's called. But that her version is ribbed all the way around the foot, which I'm not necessarily a huge fan of. Plus, I already have this pattern, so might as well use what I've got. Um, and then the third version is actually a cabled version, which mm, might be nice, but I wouldn't choose to do it with a um, pattern, like... With the yarns that I have. Like I would choose to do it with either a DK weight or um, uh, two strands of like the same fingering weight because I, if I'm going to do cables I want them to be seen. But my current plans for this is to use this um, base yarn color as one strand for the marlene and this is from the Wool Kitchen in colorway, hmm, can't really read it, it almost looks like it says hot chip, but I'm not sure if that makes sense. <laughs> anyway, so this is a 75% superwash BFL and 25% nylon, so it's a standard sock yarn. Um, I don't know that I love how this looks, like, wound up in the skein. I think it was a gift. Um, it's just kind of a lot. Um, and I know it doesn't really, or I don't, I'm not too fussy about how socks look, but I think it's the fact that there's the pink in there that's throwing me off. So anyways, I think I might combine it with one of these three colors. Um, these are all scraps, um, from, the uh, from Old Maiden Ant Yarns, I believe. Um, so I think these held together will make a really nice fabric, be nice and squishy and cozy. I've been wanting actually some thicker socks, like it's not just because I have the pattern, it's because I've realized that I would love to put on some cozy socks at the end of the night when I'm feeling particularly cold and don't, but don't just want to put the heat on, just for like my cold feet. <laughs> um, and so something a little bit kind of slouchy almost and ribbing is nice and cozy because it creates a kind of squishier fabric um so i think these will be really nice and since they are basically a dk weight um they'll knit up even faster than normal socks so bonus um so I'm, i could see myself ending up making a few different pairs of these um just depending on the yarn that i have so the next pattern is the sequential socks and they are by just says nd wolfhammer on um on ravelry and this is, um, I can't even remember where I came across these, to be perfectly honest, but I really love the idea of them. I don't have specific yarns picked out for them at the moment, but I could use pretty much any um, solid or semi-solid yarns that I have. Now, I have knit plenty of stripey socks. Um, example one. Example two. <laughs> um, example three. Like, I've done a lot of stripey socks, and they're good for using up scraps, but this is something that's a little bit different and is going to add a little bit more interest, I think, to the process. And I keep wanting to call these the flea socks because um, there's a pattern, or I think it's maybe quite a common kind of um, color work stitch um, that you see in kind of Scandinavian, Norwegian designs, and it's called the flea stitch. Um, the one I'm thinking of specifically is, like, by, is by Pickles. Uh, and I'll pop a pattern up here um, and it's just these alternating rows of stripes um, with like I'll, I'll put a picture up because I'm not going to be able to describe it well but um, yeah with with little dashes of color um, in the other in in the middle of the stripes yeah so I think it's kind of a nice way to use up odds and ends um, as I say as a little bit of interest um, but it won't be too complicated. Like I don't, I wouldn't imagine I would need like a chart or anything. It's pretty easy just to customize your existing, um, like basic so vanilla sock pattern. Um, with like it's pretty easy just to add this uh, color work to it. So yeah, that is 
Um, the next pattern that I'm definitely planning to make at some point, um, I've got plenty of scraps sitting around to choose from, so yeah, I will definitely get to that at some point as well. Okay, so that is technically 10 patterns. However, um, I basically finished making my list and then I saw um, this pattern released in Knitty. So this is the Miter Joint pattern by Shuyi Wu. Um, and it's so unique that I just had to add it as like my bonus 11th pattern. And I'm definitely going to make it um, again. Not sure when I'll start it, but I can start it any time. So it's written to suit a like long gradient yarn. And I have a few balls of um, Shopper Wool Crazy Zauber Ball um, in my stash. Uh, this is the one I'm going to use. It's kind of reds and teals. Um, I hold that up. You can see the uh, what what it's meant to work up like. So Shopper Wool or Zauber Ball um, is these kind of long gradients. Um, I really love it. It's a lot of fun. And I've made a few different socks from there uh, from the, with that wool before. Um, however, what I often tend to do, so these are striped socks made with um, one ball of, or just under one ball of, um, of the Crazy Zauber Ball. And what I will do is um, split the ball into two and then I will um, stripe like a sock, like to make the... I will stripe the sock with either end of one ball, if that makes sense. Um, so if I make a cake of yarn, I'll um, work stripes, this stripe with the outside, this stripe with the inside, outside, inside, outside, inside. And because it's these long gradients, you have these long um, stripes that slowly change color. Um, and it's just a way to add a bit of fun to your, to your long gradients. I don't know. Uh, I think it's a lot more fun to see how they work up and work together this way than it is just have necessarily a long gradient. However, for this particular pattern, I think that um, having, just keeping the gradients long like you, like they come in the ball, is a really good way to show off the construction of the pattern. And it's just so different. I've really never seen a, a pattern like this at all. Um, and I love, I love something a bit different. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a shot and see how it turns out. So that is uh, 10 accessory patterns that I am planning to make at some point. Uh, maybe in the next year or so, but we'll see if I get to them all. No pressure if I don't, but it's kind of, it's been really fun to go through uh, my yarn and match it up with a pattern. Um, and you know, if I end up finding something that works better for a particular yarn, um, I'm not necessarily going to hold myself to these, but it's it's fun to do project planning, so I really enjoyed doing this. Um, if you have any particular accessory patterns that you really like or um, any recommendations to give, I would really love to hear them. I'm always happy to hear about new pattern recommendations. Um, I find that it's so easy to get caught up in looking on like Instagram and uh, YouTube and you see a lot of people knitting the same thing. So if you have recommendations of um, anything unique or think patterns that you particularly love that you maybe haven't heard people talk a lot about, I'm definitely all ears. So thanks for joining me. Um, let me know if you're planning to knit any of these patterns and I will see you again next time. Bye.